In this video, we'll see how we can use the average ifs function to determine the average number of vacation days a new hire should receive based on data relating to our existing employees. Let's jump in. The average ifs function is super helpful when trying to pick out specific metrics from our data based on a number of factors. Let's say, for example, we're hiring a new staff who has over 15 years of relevant industry experience and will be making over $100,000 when they start. We aren't exactly sure how many vacation days we should offer them in their package, so what we can do is find the average vacation days for our current employees to help inform our decision. However, we don't want to take the average of all of our staff, as some individuals have little to no experience and do not make anywhere close to $100,000. Instead, let's use the average ifs function to narrow our criteria to focus on individuals who have between 10 and 20 years of experience and make between $100,000 and $200,000 per year. This should give us a good estimate of how many vacation days to offer the new hire. Let's start by selecting the target cell and entering in the average ifs function. Similar to the sum ifs function, we begin by entering the range we ultimately want to average, which in this case is the vacation days. Following this, we can begin entering the data range and criteria pairs to evaluate against. Let's select the years of service data and enter greater than 10 as our criteria. Since we only want to include individuals who have between 10 and 20 years of experience, we'll select the years of service data range again and then enter less than 20 as our criteria. Now, let's select the salary data range and enter greater than 100,000 as our criteria. Lastly, let's select the salary data range again and enter less than 200,000 and then close the function. Although 25.5 vacation days may not be the exact number of days we end up offering the new hire, this does give us a solid foundation to base our decision on. 